everybody we are back we're replacing a central heating system it's in a crawl space it's on a house on a hill so their crawl spaces are like you can build another house in those crawl spaces uh, they had the asbestos ducts already removed by an abatement company it's um, a two-story house and they want to be able to keep even temperature so we're gonna install a zoning system with this as well but it's really big there's no attic upstairs so the heat radiates right through the roof I'm gonna add more return which should help and it's gonna be right by the staircase so hopefully it'll catch a lot of that heat from the upstairs so that's what we're doing I hope you guys find this video to be interesting I thank you for clicking on this and without further ado here you go enjoy the video bye see you later all right so here we are um, we already uh, work is already in progress this is where the thermostat's gonna go now I'm just gonna show you where one of the supplies is down here for the first level it was actually the second level it's a three-story house um, but we're only putting two zones that's where we're gonna enlarge the supply that feeds the upstairs kitchen uh, right now it's way too small so we're gonna have to enlarge that this is for the upstairs as well and you can see that it's been encapsulated that's for the downstairs the one that I showed you the little rectangular one on the wall um, so it's been encapsulated by the or painted by the abatement company after they remove the asbestos they they paint those cans so that we can reconnect the new ducts but this is a really cool house I would have loved to have lived here when I was a little kid look at how much space there is underneath because it's built on the side of a hill so there you can build an entire home down there too like a little single or even a one or two bedroom down there probably so there's a return that we already cut and then I'm just gonna show you down there where where the furnace is gonna go it's gonna go in the same spot where the old one was turn the camera around that is where we're gonna cut the dump zone I think a 12 by 12 is what we cut so 12 by 12 is gonna be on no matter which zone is calling this one's gonna be on it's gonna have its own damper so we'll be able to adjust it but down there is the, the lowest level the lower level and there's the old return way too small that's why we added a larger one but yeah this downstairs area is right there you see the old rust stains from the old furnace that's uh, the same the same the new one is going to go in the same spot and then up here you can see where it's just a uh, button board just plaster and button board and a uh, two by four that we have to go through so this return the existing return we're going to disconnect it right at that offset and then reconnect with flex duct and this is a supply for the downstairs and that's a supply for the upstairs so now well Milo is going to be cutting this dump zone I'm gonna be assembling the equipment So here you see that the, that the dump zone has already been cut and then we already enlarged the existing supply here at the kitchen yeah, floor. So now I'm putting the foam tape on the filter cabinet. I like to, whenever possible, use the foam tape. It just makes it look a lot cleaner than just um, putting the aluminum tape on the outside. So we're going to put a TY right here, it's going to be a 1288 because we need to push maximum airflow through the upstairs um, because this duct that goes this way we're not able to enlarge unless they open the ceilings which they don't plan to do. So we're putting uh, a 1288 so that we can push maximum airflow. And then there's another one over here which we can't enlarge either but the duct's going to be connected. Um, large ducts gonna be connected to be able to push more air we are replacing the grill with one of these 
which will help with the airflow. Okay, so I'm gonna seal the inside. From the inside, I'm gonna seal the bottom of this furnace. Only these, these little knockouts, because they are a little bit open. You probably can't tell with my flashlight on, but I'll turn off my flashlight. And now you can see that they're open. So after you put your ISO pads, you need to check the level, make sure that the bubble is towards the back of just the hair, or it can be level, but I like when it's just a little more towards the back. Because then afterwards, when you set your coil, you want um, everything to drain towards the front. And you want to help it a little bit. If you can help it a little bit, it'll be better for the drainage so nothing sits in the pan. Someone asked me last time, how did I fill the gap that is because the result of the supply plate not being sized correctly? Well, this is a re what I did. I bent these down. And on this side, it's kind of the same thing. Let's see. And that covers up a little gap. But that's it. Alright, so this time I decided to use duct sealer up here. Sometimes I do. This I just recorded so that you can see where the condenser is. And this video is also the reason why I decided to get that gimbal stabilization stick. So that's where the condenser is going to go. The condenser is going to go over there. The line set is going to go underneath the crawl space. And then it's going to go up. And the furnace is up there. Let me show you. So line set over there and the furnace is over here. You still can't see it from here. But there's a furnace back there. And then we have another supply up here. It's already been encapsulated by the abatement company. It's nice to be working here, not in the attic. Okay, so now we have our return plenum all assembled. It's gonna go right here. I'm gonna put foam tape to screw it on and seal it. I am going to have to put duct sealer on that piece where I had to close it a little bit. Um, but I'll put, um, yeah, I'll put duct sealer after I assemble everything so I don't make a mess. And then the return plenum is going to be sealed from the inside with some duct sealer. Whenever possible, cut your hose first before you put it on the furnace. I always try to use both hands when cutting these holes because it's a big workout for your forearms. But I don't want to have one arm with a, with a Popeye forearm <laughs> and then the other one all skinny. We're getting ready to pull our electrical. We're gonna pull that wire through up, up there can't see. Let me get closer. And pull it from there because we're going to run our wires for the condenser through there and then we're going down with this EMT and then going through the wall down into the crawl space. Le hubiera echado gel ahí, ¿no? Sí, ¿quiere? So this 10 inch is going to be the for the bypass, right there. So, okay, so this is the next day. You can see all the duct sealer around the collars and the plenum has dried. Um, it turns sim similar color to what the coil is. Here's the ARD, the automatic round damper that's going to go on top there for the top uh, bedroom, one of the zones upstairs. 
and this is a 12 that's going to be uh, the main trunk line it's going to supply this duct right here that I'm pointing at and that TY that's going to be for the downstairs area and that other trunk on the right that one is going to be for the upstairs I have the return can tomorrow but this duct this supply trunk is getting connected here but there's also going to be a duct that tees off of that and goes under here and supplies down there to the upstairs that's what it looks like right now so I'm gonna get back to work So there's our bypass all connected. So here I wanted to show you how these ARDs are so easy to adjust, not like the old ones. You can adjust them just by setting this dial to 1, 2, or 3, or 0. Um, and what that does is that when it closes, it won't close all the way, depending on what number you set it to, which is really convenient. Uh, makes it so that you hardly don't even need a bypass almost anymore on some applications. So this is a dump zone. Uh, that I'm connecting right now and a little fast forwarding of my <laughs> my straps that I put around those ducts um, I just got asked way too many times about those straps that's why I'm showing it again and here's the all the supply trunks already connected I'm sorry that it's so dark right here, <clears throat> but this is the living room duct that's uh, in that crawl space. Uh, it was really tough. See, I'm trying to show you how high it was from the ground. It was really tough connecting that duct right there because it was so high off the ground and uneven ground. So here's the return and supply all finished. And you can see how nice it looks when you paint the inside of the can black. And then this is the dump zone. I also painted the inside of that one black and that's gonna dump air upstairs um, and I have a manual damper at the start collar so we'll be able to adjust how much air we actually dump upstairs time to run our line set yeah but this is a nice one because it's a, a cool crawl space not a your typical attic space So often when I don't have the right tool with me, I will make my own. So here's my tape holder. <laughs> I use the wire from a duck. Before I, I begin vacuum, uh, the vacuum pump, I like to purge it with uh, nitrogen. First, uh, I push nitrogen in through the suction site so that it comes out of liquid. I remove the, the, the cord. And then I uh, do the same thing through the liquid side. I definitely have to remove the cord before doing this. So there's our vent pipe installed. It's got to put a strap right here, connected to that floor joist. 
Um, it comes out through this stucco. And I'm going to show you on the other side. I put a coupling glued with that T. has a, the screen mesh, the mesh screen or chicken wire, whatever you want to call it. Um, that one, you're able to pull that out and clean it if you have to. So, sorry about the shaky camera. Um, I ordered one of those uh, gimbal sticks so that I can have a more stable image for the future videos. But um, right here, I'm just, uh, I turned off the vacuum. I shut off the valves. I'm just making sure that the microns don't rise too much, uh, indicating that I might have a leak. Um, and actually, we do really good. The vacuum, uh, I did the vacuum for a very long time, so it's really good. This is the Measure Quicks before readings, and this is the Measure Quick after readings. Check it out. Looks nice, huh? Nice green checkered flag. See, it's not just uh, straight pipes and square to the wall. It's also, according to Measure Quick, perfectly charged. Zero issues. So as usually it's the case, um, done and it's uh, already dark and it's not as dark as it looks on the video, it's just that my GoPro doesn't pick up that much light I guess. I'm gonna probably have to get a bigger, stronger lights for my next video. But yeah, um, everything's done, perfectly charged, uh, I'm gonna show you the inside as well and um, I was pretty happy with it. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.